First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Platinum Card Service, Rebecca speaking. How may I help you? I've got a few problems with my credit card account. Okay, what is your credit card number?、Mm, let's see, it's here somewhere. Ah, here it is. Can I just take the card number, please? Yes, it's six double nine two. Six double nine two. Three double four three. Three double four three. Double one four seven. Double one four seven. Eight nine two one. Eight nine two one. Right. Can I just check that? Um, six double nine two. Three double four three. Double one four seven. Eight nine two one. That's it. And your name? Carlos de Silva. I just need to check a few details for identification and security, if you'll bear with me. That's okay. And what's your postcode? S E one eight P B. S E one eight P B. That's it. Foxhall Close, London. Yes, that's right. And the house number? Um, forty three. And can you give me your date of birth? Thirteenth of the seventh, sixty-three. And one further check, if I may, can you give me your mother's maiden name? Yes, it's Moore. Is that M double O R E? Yes, that's it. Before the caller and operator continue their telephone conversation, look at questions six to ten. Now listen to the next part of the conversation and answer questions six to ten. For these questions, there are three alternatives: A, B, and C. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer and circle the correct letter. Yes. Now, can we get on with this? Yes, sir. Certainly. I'm sure you'll appreciate that all these checks are necessary for security reasons. So, what exactly is the problem? Problems. Okay. Well, first, um, your computer seems to have gone mad. I sent you five hundred pounds, and on the statement for the account, it shows that I only paid three hundred. Yes, the account does only show three hundred pounds was paid. Well. I paid the five hundred pounds in at the bank, and I have my receipt. And my bank statement shows that five hundred pounds has been taken from my account. Oh, I see. What I'll do is check with the bank and see what they say. Okay. You said there was something else. Yes, as if that wasn't enough. My account shows that a hundred and seven pounds twenty-seven was paid to a company called Pan Express. I don't know who this is. Let's have a look. Well, it is genuine. I can assure you, it's not mine. It was made on the evening of the twelfth of May. Maybe it's a restaurant bill you forgot about. There's no way that. Oh, oh wait, hold on. Yes. Oh,、uh, it's okay. 
I've just realised what it is. It is a restaurant, Bill. Um, the name of the company is different from the name of the restaurant. My mistake. I'm sorry. That's OK. Was there anything else? I don't know if I dare. What is it, anyway? Um, well, it's, um... The amount of interest seems to have gone up. Hmm. If you look at your statement for April, you'll see that the rate went down from 16.27% to 14.99% that month. Oh, yes, you're right. Was that everything? Yes, basically it is. OK. And can you check my payment? Oh, yes, I'll do it. Can I phone you back? I'll be at home for the next two hours. I have to leave at 11. Right. What's your number? 020 7989 7182. Hold on. 020 7979? No, it's 7989 and then 7182. So it's 020 7989. 7182. Yes, that's it. OK, I'll phone you straight back. Thanks. Bye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear someone talking about travelling around New Zealand. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen and answer questions 11 to 15. When thinking about beautiful countryside or stunning views, it has long been accepted that Australia and New Zealand have few equals. What is perhaps slightly less well known is what these countries can offer to the avid train enthusiast. Both countries have railways which pass through breathtaking scenery in the utmost of comfort. In New Zealand, you can travel from the country's biggest city, Auckland, to where a third of the population lives, its capital, Wellington, on the longest passenger rail service in the country, the Overlander. Crossing 681 kilometres, the train winds through the lush farmland of the Waikato and up the Raurumu Spiral onto an amazing volcanic plateau surrounded by native bush. On a clear day, you will be able to see three of New Zealand's most famous volcanoes, Mount Ruapehu, Mount Narahoe, and Mount Tongariro. The whole journey can be completed in 11 hours, but for those keen to see a little more of the country, the trip can be extended over three or four days. This gives travellers the opportunity of seeing the famous Waitomo Caves, relaxing in the mud pools of Rotorua, or skydiving over Lake Taupo. Moving on to the South Island, you can take the Transalpine through the Southern Alps, travelling from the South Pacific Ocean to the Tasman Sea. Climbing from Christchurch right into the Alps, this 223km trip is particularly impressive as the train passes through 16 tunnels before descending to Greymouth at the end of the line. Taking only 5 hours, this is a relatively short trip, but it is worth noting that this journey has been listed as the sixth most scenic rail route in the world. For those that are not so keen on mountains, the South Island has a second option, the Transcoastal, 
with the sea on one side and the mountains on the other, it again shows some of the best scenery New Zealand has to offer. Also taking five hours, one of the highlights of this journey is the opportunities for whale watching. The fortunate few that see whales are well rewarded, but there are more common sights which are just as enjoyable, such as penguins and seals. Before you hear the rest of the recording, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Although these three train journeys are undeniably breathtaking, some travellers prefer the longer journeys on offer in Australia. The Indian Pacific, for example, which travels from Sydney through to Perth and has been dubbed the adventure that spans Australia. With three nights on board, the train takes in the Blue Mountains and the Nullarbor Plains, and, as the name implies, the Indian Pacific shows you two oceans. This train journey holds two world records. Covering 4,352 kilometres, it is one of the world's longest train journeys. It also travels the world's longest straight stretch of railway track, 478 kilometres. For those who find these distances a little daunting, passengers can stretch their legs at a number of different stops, such as Kalgoorlie, famous for gold, and Broken Hill, first founded as a silver mine. If three days on board a train seems a little excessive, there are alternatives. The Garn, for example, which travels from Adelaide in the south to Alice Springs in the centre of the continent, taking 20 hours. Passing through Crystal Brook, Port Augusta and Woomera, this journey gives an indication of what life was like for the earlier settlers as they discovered the country. Along the way, you can also see the Iron Man sculpture, which was constructed by railway workers to commemorate the one millionth concrete sleeper laid during the construction of the line. Finally, just a quick word about the Overland, which runs between Melbourne and Adelaide. As the first train to travel between the capitals of two states, it is a historic as well as relaxing way to travel, and is famous for being the oldest long-distance train journey on the continent. With so many memorable journeys to choose from, the only problem you will have is knowing which one to do first. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear two students, Sharon and Zhao Li, talking to their tutor about a presentation they gave the previous week. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 23. So, Sharon and Zhao Li, in your presentation last week, you were talking about the digital divide, the gap between those who can effectively use communication tools, such as the Internet, and those who can't. 
And you compared the situation here in Northern Ireland with Southeast China, right? So I asked you to do some self-evaluation, watching the video of your presentation and thinking about the three main criteria you're assessed by: content, structure, and technique. What do you think was the strongest feature of the presentation when you watched it,、uh, Sharon? Well, I was surprised actually because I felt quite nervous, but. When I watched the video, it didn't show as much as I expected. So, which of the criteria would that come under?、Uh, confidence.、Mm, that's not actually one of the criteria as such, Jolie. Technique. It's body language and eye contact, isn't it? Well, I didn't think I looked all that confident, but I think that our technique was generally good, like the way we designed and used the PowerPoint slides.、Hmm. So you both feel happiest about that side of the presentation.、Yeah. Mm. Okay.、Uh, now on the negative side,、uh, what would you change if you could do it again? Well, at first I'd thought that the introduction was going to be the problem, but actually I think that was okay. We defined our terms and identified key issues. It was more towards the end. The conclusion wasn't too bad, but the problem was the questions.、Mm. We hadn't really expected there'd be any, so we hadn't thought about them that much.、Uh -huh. Okay.、Uh, anything else? Well, like Zhao Li says, I thought the conclusion was okay, but when I watched this on the video, I thought the section on solutions seemed rather weak.、Hmm. Can you think why? Well, we explained what people are doing about the digital divide in China and Northern Ireland, but. I suppose we didn't really evaluate any of the projects or ideas. It was just a list, and that was what people were asking us about at the end, mostly. You now have some time to look at questions twenty-four to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-four to thirty. Okay. Now I also asked you to get some peer evaluation from the other students. Yes.、Uh, well, people said it was interesting, like the fact that in China the internet was used more for shopping than in Northern Ireland. They said sometimes it was a bit hard to understand because we were talking quite fast. But we didn't think so when we watched the video. No, it's a bit different though, because you know all this information already.、Mm. If you're hearing it for the first time, you need more time to process it. That's why signposting the structure and organisation of the talk is important. That seemed okay. No one mentioned that as a problem. Some people said that we could have had more on the slides, like some of the other groups had nearly everything they said written up on the visuals as well.、Mm. But other people said the slides were good; they had just the key points. Yes. And most people said we had quite good eye contact and body language. They all pointed out we'd overrun. They all said we were five minutes over, but we timed it afterwards on the video, and it was only three minutes. We were a bit unsure about the background reading at first, but I think we did as much as we could in the time. Anyway, no one commented on that under content. But one thing that did come out was that they liked the fact we'd done research on both Northern Ireland and China. Most other people had just based their research on one country. We managed to get quite a lot of data from the internet, although we had to do our own analysis, and we did our own surveys as well in both countries. So the class gave us best feedback for content, but it was all okay. Right. Well, that's quite similar to the feedback I'm giving you. I was very impressed by the amount of work you had done and by your research methodology. So actually, I'm giving you full marks for content. Five.、Oh. <laughs> the structure of the presentation was good, but not quite as good as the content. So I gave that four, and the same for technique. So well done. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> 
Now, the next stage is to write up your report. So, just a few pointers for you here. First of all, in your presentation, I think your ending was rather abrupt. You suddenly just stopped talking.、Yeah. It wasn't a big problem, but think about your closing sentences in your report. You want to、uh, round it off well.、Mm. One thing I forgot to mention earlier was that I felt a very strong point was that after you'd given your results, you explained their limitations. The fact that we didn't have a very reliable sample in terms of age in China. Yes, that section. So don't forget to include that.、Mm. And you had some excellent charts and diagrams, but maybe you could flesh out the literature review a bit.、Mm. I can give you some ideas for that later on if you want. Okay.、Uh, is there anything else you want to ask? No, no, thank you. Thanks. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a tutor giving some business students instructions about a finance project. You now have thirty seconds to read questions thirty-one to thirty-six. Okay, can you quieten down, please? Now, today I'm going to talk to you about your assignment. We've been studying the effects of the exchange rate, so I'm going to give you a project to do on this. Right? Can you make some notes while I'm talking? The first thing that I'd like you to do in order to prepare this is to select where you're interested in. I mean, which country, and therefore which currency you're going to be operating in. Okay, now the purpose of the project is to make money, and I'm hoping some of you will make a significant amount. So I want you to suppose that you have one hundred pounds that you will have to invest purely in the rises and falls of the exchange system. In other words, you'll be trying to predict rates. This is a project that you'll be doing together. But before you work together, you'll have to go off and research what you need to know about the economy of that country, and how well it's doing or is expected to do in the near future. You could all make up a little information sheet with your notes on, clearly legible. Because then I want you to get together. We can do that next week, and to go round and read about each other's countries. When you see how well or badly each country is doing, I want you to decide what your exchange rate is going to be against all the other currencies. After that is all sorted, what you're going to do is go round the other students. And attempt to sell your money to the others. Remember, this will depend on the success of your country's economy and the rate you fixed for your currency. Now, you're not allowed to just swap currencies with each other, but you may wish to buy from the other countries. But you must do a proper transaction. All the way through this, you must keep your accounts properly for each transaction. I'll give you one week to do this, and then we will set a time for the deals to finish, a bit like the stock exchange. And 
At that point, I will ask you to calculate how much you have made. Is that clear? You now have 30 seconds to read questions 37 to 40. OK, now before you begin that, there are a few things I want you to read up on to prepare. You need to look at the economies of the UK's main trading partners. I don't mean all of them, because that would be over 80, but just the 29 principal ones. There are summaries in the last three books on the book list I've given you. And so that you can practice applying the criteria on assessment I gave you, I'd then like you to focus just on one sector across all the countries. The most common one across every country is farming. But as much agricultural produce is for domestic consumption, I'd like you to look at manufacturing. Then I would like you to do a detailed investigation of one particular aspect. I was going to give you a choice, but I think as we've just started the course, it's better if we all look at the same thing and then we can discuss it in the seminars. So the thing I'd like you all to look at is fluctuations in import prices. Now, you need to do all that before you start the project as it will help you assess the economies of the countries you'll be representing in the project. Don't worry, you've got plenty of time. Exam week is December the 8th, then it's the holidays until January the 6th, so I don't need the project in till February the 5th. Is that okay? Now, any questions on this? Because it's